Hey everybody, it's Matthew, also known as Mr. Domestic. I'm here to share with you the woven hexi ornament, yay! I did not realize how much I missed fabric weaving until I dove into this one head first. And I am super duper stoked to share it with y'all. Now it looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. So I have this wonderful, beautiful video planned for you in store for some fun so you can learn all of the steps and the tips and tricks to your intro to fabric weaving and your intro to fun. So if that's what you're here for, first thing, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Then anytime you feel like it, give it the thumbs up and get ready to have some fun. <laughs> so for this woven hexi ornament, these are most of the supplies that you're going to need. And there are gonna be multiple phases to this video to set you up for creating this amazing ornament. The first part of the video, just so you can follow it, I'm going to draw the grid on this foam board. So these are some of the things that you'll need. You'll need some kind of foam board. So you can see here, I think it's a 5 8 Elmer's foam board that I've cut. A ruler that has a 30 degree angle on it and a Sharpie. And then this is just another thing that I like for a lot of ornaments. I think it like gives it that extra zhuzh oomph. Ooh la la. These are two part eyelets, but it's optional. You could always sew the ribbon on in the end. Then this is a wefting needle that my awesome friend Tara invented. This is perfect for fabric weaving, which is what this ornament's all about. These are my favorite pins. They're ergonomic, they're red, they're sturdy. Then you're gonna be pinning the fabric into the foam board. And then for the fabric, you need two contrast strips for this since you're making a star in the center. They're three inches using Pat Bravo's Indie Folk here, and they're with the fabric. So I have these two. And then, for the first part, you have your foam board. It's gorgeous. And this is a small ornament, so what you'll need to do is take your Sharpie and draw like a, it doesn't have to be perfect, like a center line there. And then an inch and a half to the right, draw another line. And then an inch and a half to the left, draw another line. And you just need those three lines. And these are just as a guide. You don't have to make sure that the strips fit perfectly in there, it just guides you along the way. And since there's no horizontal line to measure the, the 30 degree, I'll use the vertical to measure a 60 degree. So align this line on the 60 degree, and then it creates that 30 degree angle here. And then I'll just draw one there. And do the same thing, go an inch and a half up, an inch and a half up. Bum, 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 look how pretty that is. And then you need to draw the other one. So I'm putting this 60 on this line. So it's creating a 30 degree angle here. Boom. See how it drew that and then go an inch and a half up and an inch and a half up. Ta-da! So that's what the grid looks like. And if you need to see it better or closer, you wanna be able to zoom in to make sure you get it. This is on my blog post for this ornament. So you can see that there and a lot of the step outs for the steps. So the next thing that I'm going to do is iron this. And I'll be right back and show you what exactly I do to iron it and then to top stitch it. So yay, I've got my handy dandy little mat, my ironing mat that I can just put on anywhere with my row one to iron. And I'm kind of salty about this because I love to put like water in my, my irons, but this has been leaking rust and I've been doing everything that I need to to make it better, but it's not working. So I got some best press, <laughs> which is awesome. This is the subtle scent. Um, because who doesn't need a little bit of subtle scent in their life? And I'm gonna do this by hand. I'll just fold this in half towards the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're just gonna fold it on top of each other into the center and no one's gonna know. So just do it like this. I'll show you a little bit more. Cause it's fun to watch me iron. Let me spray some subtle scents. Spray it on my face, but you can't see. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ooh, I smell so scenty. <laughs> okay, so let's just through the magic of technology pretend like I did the whole thing and now I'm at my sewing machine and I'm showing you how I top stitch it and why I didn't iron this on top of each other. This because I just fold it and I put these edges right there and then I just sew. And then after I sew both sides, and then I iron it afterwards, because then it's just one less step, and it's like, you know, it's nice to be efficient and stuff. So <laughs> now that I have this all stitched up, I'm gonna show you what to do with the weaving. So now I have top stitched both width of fabric strips, and I cut each fabric into five inch pieces, so I have six of each. And that means you have some excess, and the excess of both I didn't top stitch the entire length because the excess length of the other one I'm going to use for the binding, I just need to pick that out. I didn't decide which one I was gonna have on the outside until now. This is gonna be the outside. This is gonna be the inside. And this is the lovely grid. Grid, yay. So this is how you start. And we do this in three layers. This is called a triaxial weave, meaning that there are three axles that you are weaving into. And the first layer is the easy peasy one. And I'll start right here. Let's start with the inside ones. So the inside, the star fabric is always going to go in the middle. So I'm putting this one down and this is a pin. And what I do for the pins, I stick it in a little bit and then I'll turn it at an angle and push it in so that it holds this fabric in place. I do the same thing here. And then here's the other center one. And each layer is going to have four of these five inch strips and two of each color. And then these are going on the outside See how it doesn't butt up against that line perfectly? That's totally fine. I just use that as a guide for larger weaves to make sure that it's at least symmetrical or moderately symmetrical. And then with this one, I am done with the first layer. The first layer is easy peasy. Yay! But now we get into weaving, which is what this wefty is for. It's not mandatory for the second layer. You must have it for the third layer because the third layer is pretty tough. So this is the third layer and essentially you're going to start differently going one, two, three, one. So this first one it's going to go over, under, over like this. Do you see how I did that one? And then the next one, this one, I'll put it in my little wefty. See how I weave it here. This one, it's going to start, start going under. Then you're going to go over and then under too. So essentially you're moving the weave over, the pattern of the weave over. And then while it doesn't have to go flush against the line, try and keep the fabric strips butt it up against each other so that there aren't gaps in the ornament so it'll look extra like spash and then this is the third and on larger weaves i would label it go one two three one just so i can see it but hopefully for these these four we can get it so what's next so this one i'm going to go under two over one under two like that And once again, I have this, each one of these steps in my blog. If you're not able to visualize it as I'm doing it, then you can see the, the step outs there on my blog. And this is the final one. This one's gonna be exactly the same as the bottom one because it's essentially starting over. So it's gonna be over, under two, over. Like that, ta-da! So that's layer two. Layer three is where this is the most amazing invention ever created by Tara because it's it goes up right here so it doesn't catch on the bottom strips. And so this is the first one. And what you're looking for now, you're looking for these Zs, these backward Zs. It's hard to see, but it goes 
like that and you're gonna go under those. I don't have a tool. This is where a purple thing would be good. If you have a purple thing, I'm just gonna use my scissors to help it go through. And then it goes back up right here. See how it went through the Z? And then it's gonna go back under this. Well, that one ain't right. Wrong. I did this one wrong. See, this was wrong. This was the wrong color. This one is supposed to be here. So let me start that one again. So I showed you how to do it wrong. This one, the Z is right here. So let's go under here. I was like, that doesn't look right. Here is this right here and then this one should go under here if you want to do it like that. This is where the pictures will help you a lot in my blog. Because you're probably right now like, what is this man doing? <laughs> okay, so now this one is the one that I did before. And yeah, I'm gonna leave that mistake in the video. So you're like, why did he leave that in there? Just so that you can see, you know what? I've been, been doing weaving for a, a long time and a lot of times I gotta back up. That's what's great about fabric weaving is if you make a mistake or do something wrong, you can just pull it out. Or if it doesn't look cute, you pull it out. You don't need no seam ripper. You just pull it out and do it again. Okay, see how I went under the Z there? Flatten it out, bum, bum, bum. And this is when the magic starts to happen and you'll see the star start to form. And it's so super cool. And I'll pin this here. And then there's two more strips. Are you starting to see the star? Part of the star. And then one more strip. And then there's the Z. I always look for a full Z. So I go under here, I go over these two strips and then I guess it's more of an S, but it's like a backward Z. It needs to go under that, and then over right here. This one you'll really see the star happen. And if you're only looking at the video, you might look at this and think it's a little complicated, but once you see the still pictures on my blog, you'll see it's not complicated at all. And it's one of those things you can impress people with. Be like, look what I did. I can't believe you wove that. How did you do that? There we go. Look at the star it formed. A star is born, folks. A star is born. Dun, 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 dun. Yay. So, so I've begun with the washi tape and I figured this step was important to show so you're not so scared to remove it. You can see it in live action. And I'm just going right here, I'm doing the washi tape on the edge of the outer color strip. And that's gonna create the hexagon. It's gonna show the shape of the hexagon. And then I'll remove it. And this washi tape is really good. Like, it sticks and it does the job. I wouldn't like, before sewing it and stitching it, go put it in the dryer or anything. Like, that would... <laughs> <laughs> not be so good. But this washi tape will allow you to transfer it from the foam board to the cutting and then to your sewing machine. So see, see how there's a, a hexi now? Then just remove the pins. See, I ain't scared. I'm just taking the pins out. Ain't nothing to be scared of, y'all. Tape works. It's not gonna fall apart. And then now it's done. And then ta-da! Now I have it here. And what I'm going to do is use my ruler and cut a quarter inch to the outside of the edge of the washi tape, like so. And then the binding is essentially gonna go over that excess, but before I bind it, I'm going to stitch on the outside so that I can remove the tape. But I just wanted to show you this part so that y'all aren't scared when you do it. I know that was the scariest part for me when I first started fabric weaving was the removal. It's like you do all the work and get this like really cool like textile and then you're scared to take it off. So here we go. 
Ta-da, that's the hexi. So now I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how I stitch it and then remove the tape and then we'll get to the binding. So here I am at my sewing machine and essentially I'm just going to edge stitch right on the outside of the tape at the standard two and a half. One thing I did do for this is I went ahead and put on a denim needle since this is thicker when I quilt or sew onto weaves I usually use a denim or a jeans needle because it's thicker and it'll perforate all the layers without an issue. The last thing you want if you stitch your weaving and you think that it's done and you can like manhandle it a little more is to have your stitches come out. So I would highly suggest getting a denim needle for that. See how I'm edge stitching it. Here, two more layers. Ta-da! And now I can just remove the tape, right? I don't need the tape anymore. Just pull it off. I'm just yanking it off. I'm yanking that tape off. I'm not even trying to be any sorts of gentle just to show you that this weave is not going anywhere and you don't have to be scared. And then I'm probably just gonna leave this right there. I'm not even gonna take it off. No one's gonna know. <laughs> so now I'm gonna show you how I do the binding. I'll be right back. So how I got the binding was the excess strip that I had of the outer layer. I sliced it in half down the middle. So instead of it being three inches wide, it became one and a half inches wide. And then since this is so tiny, I used glue and I essentially did the same kind of fold as I did for the bigger strips to double fold the binding and I've glued each on around the hexagon. I just wanted to save this last one so I can show you right here and it's like just enough to cover it, just enough to cover it. And for this, I kind of cheat on this corner, this corner right here. No one's gonna know. <laughs> That's my motto. No one's gonna know. <laughs> um, but then this is also the corner that I put the grommet on so that no one will see it. And I'll just fold that over like that. And then I fold this under to essentially create the corner right there. And it's that, the reason I put the grommet there is just to hide it because it is slightly different than the other ones. But um, even under close inspection, people probably won't see it. And now I just will add stitch here along the line. I'll show you that. And with these folds right here, sometimes they'll fold the, the wrong way. So this is where I get like a screwdriver and I make sure that it's folded under. And then once it catches that, then I can turn it like that. And it's probably more in between, see how that one was ding, 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 ding. I'm folding that towards. But I was saying it's, it's more in between edge stitching and an eighth edge stitch. So as long as it's about the same all the way around, it'll be cute. So I will fast forward to this and get you to the end. And then now I'm at the end, I'm just gonna continue a little bit and then I will backstitch. Yes, I'm backstitching. Don't be scared to backstitch when you need two quilters. And then there's some extra thread and I'll just trim off the extra thread. And then now I will take you to see me putting the grommet on and then we'll call it a day. So, da -da 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 -da. yay! So here is the beautiful finished woven hexi. The last thing is, to, I'm gonna call them grommets just cause I think they all are grommet looking, but this technically is a two part eyelet and I'm gonna put it right here. So the first thing that I do, I use my seam ripper for everything. <laughs> like is to poke a little hole so the grommet has a place to go. And if you need to use some scissors and go ahead and do that. And then once the hole is there, 
technology. Now we're gonna put the grommet on and per the directions and instructions that are on the two-part eyelet, use that. And once they're on, you can add the 1 8 inch ribbon, loop it around, and you have got yourself a woven hexy ornament. <laughs> so yay! It wasn't that hard, right? Or maybe it was. This is one of the more complicated, honestly, ornaments that I have in the ornament along. That's why on my vlog you'll see step outs, pictures, you can zoom in, get real close absorb it and then come back to the video but if you enjoyed this plan on making it i can't wait to see your woven hexy ornaments so keep it positive y'all mr domestic out <laughs>